Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours. My channel aims to bring you quality setups, tutorials, tips, guides and tours for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So do check out my other content too. In today's video, we'll be discussing and testing the Windows Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling Tool and how this impacts performance in VR for Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's been a lot of debate about this setting and whether or not it should be enabled to get the best performance possible in VR. The intention of this video is to put it to the test on my PC and share my thoughts with you so you can apply this to your own system and try it out too. If you are interested in learning about an amazing new capability in VR, then check out my recent video covering foveated rendering with eye tracking, which is an update coming soon for the OpenXR toolkit. Remember, my channel is the only one which has actual footage of this new tool in action, as well as accurate information about these future updates. I am in the process of creating a video which will feature both Matteo and Jean-Luc discussing the amazing OpenXR toolkit. So please leave any questions you have in the comment section below for the team, and I'll use these when preparing the video. Usually, the Windows Display Driver model GPU scheduler takes care of managing multiple processes that submit tasks to the GPU. While the GPU is responsible for rendering, the CPU is responsible for planning and sending those tasks to the GPU. To make the process more efficient, the CPU will submit commands in batches instead of one at a time. This technique is called frame buffering, and it increases performance by producing better frame rate. However, this process comes at a cost, since it always increases input latency. As such, when you press a button, there'll be no effect until the CPU submits the new batch to the GPU. The hardware accelerated GPU scheduling feature takes some of the high priority tasks that your CPU usually manages and passes them to a dedicated GPU based scheduling processor. Theoretically, this should take some load off the CPU and reduce the input lag, as well as improve performance. If your computer has a low or mid tier CPU, the GPU hardware scheduling feature might be worth turning on especially if your CPU reaches 100% when playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here you can see I'm flying with HAGS turned off on the left and on on the right using my 3080 card. I personally recommend doing a quick test to check which works best for you. I've been flying with it turned off 95% of the time, but did enable it for a few weeks a while back, but then noticed some unreliable stutters sometimes, so I turned it back off and it's fixed the problem. I usually do this test after any big sim updates or when a new graphics card is released. You can see here I'm getting slightly more frames with HAGS turned off, and it's not all about the frame rate, it's more about the feeling and the stuttering. With HAGS turned on, I'm seeing a stutter every few seconds, which I don't like. It doesn't translate so well to video here, but I definitely can see it in my headset. Do leave your thoughts and comments on whether you prefer to enable or disable HAGS, and feel free to show your test results too, as I think it might make for some good discussion. As you know, I make these videos to give you my perspective with the intention of helping you get your system dialed in. I'm careful not to make statements, like all 3000 series card owners should turn HAGS on for example. I do think it's worth taking 10 minutes or so to do a quick test when flying in VR to see what works best for you. Other combinations of settings will have an impact too, but testing will get you started. The FPS counter is useful, but I would always go with how it feels and looks and check for stuttering when judging which you prefer, especially in VR. I've tested this with my Quest 2, Reverb G2 and Vario Aero and I've turned off HAGS for all three headsets when flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For more of my settings videos, check out the playlist in the link above. I do have a 3080 and an i9-10900K, so we'll be keen to hear how people with other setups are finding HAGS turned on or off. And in the end, the decision is yours. If you do decide to test it with other games and don't see many changes, don't be too surprised. According to Microsoft, users shouldn't notice any major differences in game. However, you may notice some positive changes in your CPU's load and temperature. In terms of Microsoft Flight Simulator in VR, the same applies, so I suggest testing and going with whichever gives you the smoothest flight in VR. And do check out my video focusing on the new foveated rendering with eye tracking tool, which is an amazing update coming soon to the OpenXR toolkit, which includes actual footage. As always, I hope you find this content useful, and I look forward to making the next video soon. In the meantime, as always, take care and stay safe.